Hello, I'm Gerard. Welcome back to the channel. This week, we're going to talk about this crazy emperor who requested creepy life-size dolls to be made and placed outside of his grave. Yeah, we're talking about Emperor Chin. Also, this is actually going to be the last episode of us talking about the Terracotta Warriors. It's been a great journey. Also, if you're looking for travel inspirations, look no further! Personally, I believe that anybody can travel, especially in a day and age like this, and I aim to be the living proof to you guys, to that statement. If that sounds fun to you, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps us a lot. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. So who is this Emperor Qin we speak of? The Emperor Qin in Chinese is Qin Shi Huang or he called himself Shi Huangdi. He wanted to differentiate himself from the kings or emperors before him, and he did. In world history, he is a very respected figure. He was the first emperor who united the seven states. So he was the first one who actually created China before it was even called China. But all this happened back in 221 BC when the war ended. He ended the war, he conquered everything. That's one way to stop the war. The reason to why he easily picked off each and every state was because of his superior firepower. Imagine marching into the battlefield and you see, well, the infamous Gur, a weapon designed to tackle the horseback riders, and then crossbows. When you're holding bow and arrow and you see someone firing metal arrow at you, do you think you stand a chance? Hey guys, this is Edding Gerard, and I have a little bit of an additional information for this crossbow. I found this article that reported on when the crossbow was unearthed. This crossbow was 1.3 meter in length and had a range of up to 800 meters. Just what? So the enemy really stood no chance against the Qin army. Yeah, so back to the video. Also, their higher end weapons are chromium plated. You heard me right. Here we thought the technology of chromium plating was out back in the early 20s when this dude, Georgie J. Sargent, wrote a paper on it. No, the Chinese had it 2,200 years ago and we didn't even know about it. After he conquered everybody, he ended the war. He was quick to standardize everything. Everything from language to currency, to measuring units like height, weight, length, no, same thing. The trading efficiency went up a hundredfold. Nah, no, I doubt it. He even went as far as to standardize the width of the wagon axles so that he can build like two laners across the country. He created the first ever highway in the world, linking the capitals of each and every states, or well, previous states. And you would think that it was to up the efficiency of the trades even more, right? No, 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 no. He was literally just gonna ensure that he remains in power. If you, you're in the capital of Zhao, putting together a revolution, yay, strike, strike. Well, he's gonna march his army down that highway and then he's gonna silence you. That's all he thinks about. To remain in power. To remain in power! He had people carved out their names and the date where everything was made back then, be it swords or bricks or whatever it is. And you would think that this is to honor them in the future. No! This was actually just to, well, to find out who's liable for anything that breaks. And then you lose your head. So I can imagine it was very stressful back then working for this crazy dictator. If you still don't know who he was, he was the emperor who unified all the other divert walls into one wall, which is one of the seven wonders of the world, which is what we know today as the Great Wall. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. No, no, not, not the one Trump wants to do. No. I mean, the one in China. Yeah, that wall. So then, what's the conclusion of this all? I find this kind of ancient dictatorship that kind of reign to be quite fascinating. It is only that we had this kind of dictatorship that we have this kind of crazy massive structures from the past. The Great Wall, the Colosseum, the, this, this mausoleum, the seven wonders of the world, most of them 
came from the crazy dictatorships from before. This mausoleum has a surface area of 56 km square. That is huge! It was built throughout the course of 38 years by approximately a total number of 720,000 slaves. Some of the slaves actually lived three generations there throughout that course of 38 years. Imagine being born there and died there, building this crazy structure from this crazy emperor. Like what I said, pressure. Under pressure. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, and by the way, this emperor, he died when he was 49. And this was built for 38 years. So imagine you being a 10 year old and you ask for a mausoleum the size of, I don't know how many football fields, to be built. What will we be doing when we attend? Daddy, daddy, can I have an ice cream, please? Anyway, all jokes aside, he died due to overdosage of mercury. Yeah, I'm gonna get that too in the future. Just because he was obsessed with being young, being immortal. He, he was looking for that fountain of youth and that was the one who killed him. Still, he was super obsessed with it. Even after he died, he still buried himself underground in a pool of mercury. So basically, his corpse, his coffin is still floating on that pool of mercury. Do I want this in the modern life? I don't think so. But it being there in the course of history kind of shows us the evolution of us humans. It makes us appreciate what we have now. We came from there and where we are now is so much better than what we had back then. There is a saying, there's no better day to live than today. And I find that very true. Anyway, this is the end of this episode. I share a little bit of my insights towards, well, this place and the history. If you find this video entertaining to watch or helpful, please share it to your friends or family or wherever you like to share it. It helps us a lot. But if you don't like this video, feel free to share it to someone you hate. Yeah, I'm still going with that. I guess that's it and I'll see you guys next week. See ya. Ciao.